Well, why don't we start with one of my properties? Why don't we start with a property that just recently went vacant? And this is a slumlord property that I purchased about a year or so ago. I'm gonna show you how you can increase the value of a house astronomically without adding any square footage, just by making the right repairs and by adding a couple of little extra details. So if you wanna see, I'm gonna just probably double the value of this duplex, watch the video. Now, as we come into this building, you're gonna probably notice that it looks terrible. Now, this is a combination of the fault of the tenant because they didn't keep it in great condition, but also a fault of the previous owner. He didn't foster an environment where the tenants felt comfortable coming to him when things were broken so that they could get it fixed. Probably because if they broke something, he was gonna charge it for them. And sometimes that's rightly so but also because sometimes the relationships between tenants and slumlords can be strained. Now, as we come in, you're gonna notice that there's a lot of damage in here. There's a lot of things like these blinds that just look disgusting, the blinds that look disgusting, the drop ceiling that's dropped onto the floor. That's not what we want. We wanna foster and create a culture with our tenants that allow them to be comfortable enough to come to us when a repair needs to be done so that we can make those repairs in a timely fashion and get things taken care of. This is why I'm a big proponent of the Section 8 program because Section 8 does inspections. We can't let 95% of what's wrong with this unit happen when Section 8 does their inspections. It needs to be corrected and fixed and that keeps the property in better condition. Now let's show you how I'm gonna make a bunch of money with this thing. Not only am I gonna get rid of the sticky tile on the floor, we're probably gonna get a water heater that's not from 2007 um, and probably a water heater that still has all of its pieces actually intact on it. Take a look at the kitchen. Now, obviously, again, as I mentioned earlier, some of this is the condition the tenant left the property and you can see they were not particularly clean people. There's just crap everywhere. The stove, if you haven't seen nasty, disgusting stoves before, you know, this is the type of stuff you're gonna see when, when bad tenants move out of slumlord properties. So we can just see how gross the stove is. And we can see how nasty the fridge is. Now, here's a rookie move that I learned as a cop. Never open the fridge. You don't want to open the fridge. Opening the fridge is one of the worst mistakes that you can make uh, unless you're trying to cleanse yourself out. And right here, we got a little fly that's just desperate to escape. But he is caught in a spider web. All right, now I want you to look. This is how I'm going to make all of the money with this unit right here, okay? Notice how there's an entrance into this room right here. Now let's go find the second entrance. We walk around, here's the wall for that room, here's the other wall for that room, and boom! We got a second entrance right here. So let's go inside. In fact, you can see the first entrance from this one. So as we come in here, this was probably some sort of dining room at one point. Maybe, maybe at one point, this wall was gone and it just opened straight up to the kitchen. I'm not sure, but let me show you how we're gonna make all the money. This is a two bed, one bath house. But again, we've got this little room right here. So all we need to do is install a door here. We come into this room. We've got the legal windows to make this room legal. Then we come to here, leave this door frame here, but put a closet, just run a wall from here straight to that wall. And you might say, well, why would I want a window in the closet? There's already one upstairs. I'll show you in a minute. But even if I don't take the wall all the way down there for those four feet, if I just bump this closet out a foot and a half and then cut it back in towards this window, now we have a usable closet. The definition of a room is that the room needs to have a closet and it needs to have windows of a certain size. And then in order for it to be legal for section eight, what we need is for the room to have a total of 80 square feet which means that we need some combination of eight by 10 or nine by nine, something that gets it over 80 square feet. And then usually there is a height requirement for the ceiling. Now I'm six foot four, and I don't know if you can tell, but even reaching all the way up, I'm just barely touching the ceiling. So this is probably an eight and a half foot ceiling. We have no problem with the height requirement. So what we're gonna do to increase the value of this property exponentially, is turn it in from a two bedroom into a three bedroom. And when the tenants on the other side move out, which that side's already been remodeled, I didn't know the layout was like this, or I would have done it the first time around. When the tenants on the other side move out, I will add a third bedroom over there and I'll take this two bed one, two bed one duplex and turn it into a three bed one, three bed one duplex. Doing something as simple as that will increase the value of this property exponentially. And it will also increase the amount of rent that we can get because 
Section 8 does not care and tenants don't care about the square footage of the property. Notice the square footage of the property won't be impacted at all. What actually happens is that when you increase extra rooms, we have more places where we can put additional occupants. By adding this extra bedroom, we take the rent we can get from Section 8 from $9.50 a month, which is what the other side's paying. Section 8 tenant is in there that I place for $9.50 a month. And now I can take it all the way up to $11.50 or $12.50 a month via Section 8, which is a $200, $300 a month increase. And all I did, all I did was put in a little like fake wall with a closet door and a regular door. Done. Easy. Easy stuff like that makes you more money. Now let's go upstairs. All right, so again, we're gonna see how nasty this place is. Um, I like I like the real wood stairs. Um, what I don't like, yeah, we need to get that we need to, we need to get that secured. Uh, <laughs> so we go up, and you're gonna see it's pretty gross. Not the worst I've been in, but definitely gross. Uh, so what I'm gonna do in here, obviously, we will rip the toilet out, clean the vanity up a little bit. We need to paint, paint and patch. The walls in here for the toilet or for the for the bathroom itself that's just a crappy tub surround that's not porcelain I'll probably just rip that out we won't be able to put in a plastic surround because of this window there's no vent in here so i want to leave the window but what i'll probably do is just go from this little stud wall over with a big 12 inch tiles we'll rip all those tiles out we'll put in a new plastic uh, tub we'll just get this cleaned up get this painted yeah, and uh, maybe put like a more usable shelving situation in here since that's kind of honestly a big, that's a big little, like I can stand in that. I don't know if it's showing exactly how wide it is, but that's like, that's, that's like four feet deep right there. So, okay, we come back out here. All right, now this is what I mean when I say the tenant is responsible for the condition that they leave the property in, okay? We're going to come in here and you're going to see, yeah, I mean, they moved out. They were not evicted. They weren't evicted. They moved out of their own accord. You know, I bought this property with this tenant in it. Now I knew it was a slumlord property and we let them know immediately any repairs they need will make. Um, but I'm not going to be able to do a full remodel while they're in here. I also don't want to force people out. So if they want to keep living in the conditions of the property, I will get it cleaned up. The exterior we took care of, the plumbing issues we took care of, uh, but the interior, obviously we're not going to paint, patch, new carpet, new everything until the tenant moves out because I don't want to be forcing people out. And if they're already okay living in what I would consider dated and old and gross, that's on them. So this closet is a little small closet. Got the window right here. Again, you can see just how, just how, wait, wait, hold on a minute. At least this tenant was an artist. Yeah, look at that. Okay, respect that. This must've been the kid's room. Left a whole bunch of their artwork in here actually. That's a shame. Hopefully they're not looking for that. But yeah, look down. I mean, just look down here. Just nothing but trash and bottles. It's gross. We'll leave the window open just because I don't want to get moldy and gross in here by closing it all up. So obviously I will probably do LVP on the entire upper floor unless this hardwood can be salvaged. If this hardwood floor can be salvaged and it's under that carpet, we'll do that as well. Let's look at bedroom number two. We come in behind door number two. The exact same stuff, just gross. Okay, carpets look disgusting. This must've been their walking path right here. You can see how it's extra matted down as they probably walked around the bed and the section in the center where it's not as gross is probably where the bed was. Maybe a dresser or something over here. Gross, gross, gross. This is uh, room number two. Again, what we'll do in here, yeah, obviously we're gonna get new blinds. We're gonna get rid of all the freaking cobwebs. Like, bro, I don't understand why people do this. They only moved out like a month ago. These cobwebs are from the last several years. Like, how do people not dust their house? I would be, I would be scared. Like, how many spiders does it take to make something that big? What the hell? Gross. Um, yeah, gross. Anyway, so uh, replacing the blinds, painting the walls, ripping out the carpet, putting an LVP, or probably just reusing this hardwood flooring right here because that hardwood flooring is clearly in the closet. It looks like it's the whole second story. Nice. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Look at this beautiful before and after transition we got going on right here. Look at the floor, I told you. I told you I was getting rid of that sticky tile. And of course, there's no more ceiling panels falling down, making the entire place look disgusting. Let's step into that extra room that I told you I was gonna add. You can see right there that closet that I put in. We repainted the room. We put a nice little trim down, LVP flooring everywhere, fixed all the blinds that were disgusting. Coming back out into the family room, it's just night and day. 
Walking into the kitchen, you're gonna notice that I paint a lot of cabinets in my rental units blue. I really think the blue looks great with the uh, gray on the walls. I like the blue, it makes them pop. I like painted cabinets because they can be repainted when there's a problem. You can see where that wall comes out and closes off that pass-through that used to be there. Total night and day. We got a lot more in rent from this thing as I converted it to a section eight as well. I'll, I'll tell you a little more on that later. We go up the stairs. Hey, look at that carpet on the stairs. The banister is secured. No major issues. Paneling on the wall is painted. And I was so happy when I found out we could do the floors, keep the hardwood floors that were there. Underneath that carpet that you saw earlier, it was beautiful hardwood, well-preserved. All I had to do was stain it, sand it, a little shellac. We're good to go. No more cobwebs much nicer way nicer uh no more ceiling fan just a regular light in there i mean you could just like anybody would love being in this property at this point it's gorgeous so we took a two bed converted it to a three bed it was renting for 750 a month now i just got the approval back from section eight and the tenants are supposed to move in there in just a couple of days it's going to be renting for 1200 dollars a month that is a 450 dollar a month increase and it only cost me about $13,000 to get this remodel done. Now let's take a look at the last thing, the bathroom. If you remember, it was ugly, beautiful. We did stay with the same size of tiles, but obviously we put new tiles in there, new toilet, new vanity, new sink, new flooring, much better looking. Just a complete total night and day difference. This is the type of work that we put into our properties. This is what we do to make sure that our tenants feel like they have a good house, they can be proud of, that they're gonna wanna stay at so that we don't have turnover. And then I partner with Section 8, so that I can make sure that I'm working with low income families and getting consistent rent, which is very important in a low income market like Gary, Indiana. Hopefully you guys like this video. Appreciate you as always for watching and hey, we'll see you next time.